Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and in this series, we're going to be taking a fresh look at FlexTime in Logic Pro. Now, FlexTime is used to compress or expand the time within specified events in an audio region, so you can make faster or slower sections within a recording. Now, we edit the timing of notes and beats in audio regions using what are called flex markers. So the idea is we turn on flex time view and then we enable flex on a track. And once we choose a flex time algorithm, the contents of the audio track are analyzed for transients and peaks. And these detected transients are marked in the audio regions with a dotted line, which you'll see in a moment. Now, the idea is we add one or more flex markers at the specific parts within the audio region that we want to edit. And after we add these markers, we use them to time stretch. So we can either compress, make a section faster, or expand, make a section slower to time stretch the audio material. And the boundaries within which this compression or expansion are determined are based on the transient markers that are detected. So let's take a look at what this all looks like. Now, to start with, there are several ways that we can enable the flex time view. We can go under the local edit menu in the tracks area and go show flex time pitch, and that enables this view. And there's no transient markers, nothing's been detected yet because flex time isn't on for this track. And I'm just going to turn it off just to show you a couple of other ways that we can do it. We can also use the shortcut Command F, that does the same thing. And I'm just going to use that again to get rid of it. And I'll just show you quickly in here if I Go Command F. It's called Show Hide Flex Time Pitch in case you want to reassign it manually. We can also use this button up here to turn it on or off. And this is mutually exclusive with Automation View. So you can't view both at the same time. So once it's enabled, we need to click the Track Flex button in the track header of the audio track that we want to edit. So in this case, I have a drum loop and a guitar part. I'll just play it for you briefly. Some chords and then a little melody over here and it goes on so here I'm gonna press this button and now it analyzes the transients and it's already analyzed this file that's why they came on instantaneously but you might see a moment or two of a progress bar and these little dotted lines represent the transients that is detected within the audio file You'll notice that my cursor is now changed to flex tool, and it depends where I place it in the position in the audio file. It'll change icons. We'll go over all this, of course, in more detail. So now that I've got flex enabled, you'll notice that in the region inspector, flex and follow is available. We have the different modes. We can turn it off, in which we don't see anything. We have on and different algorithms here, which we'll get to in a moment. Now you'll also notice in the track inspector that the Flex mode pop-up menu is now available for use. We can choose between these different algorithms. Now, the idea is that we choose the algorithm we want to use and we continue. But before we do that, I want to show you how this works in the audio track editor. So I'm just going to turn off flex view here and I'm going to hit E to open the editors and we have the audio track editor over here. And what we can do is click the show hide flex button in the audio track editor or press command F. But with this highlighted, I can enable it there and we get the same display with the transient markers detected. Now, a dialog window is going to ask you if you want to turn flex on for the selected track if it's not already on and it is on. So let me just turn this off over here. And now when I click this, it's asking me if I want to turn it on for the lead guitar. So I'm going to turn it on and now, if we enable flex view here, you'll see that it's enabled. And then we can choose the flex time algorithm from here as well. Now, here's a handy little tip. When we're choosing the flex algorithm, if we hold down the shift key, we can assign the same flex algorithm to all of the audio tracks in the session. Now, let's look at these flex and follow parameters. So these are available on a per region basis. We have off, which is actually very useful. I find if I'm editing, let's say, multi-track drums and I have a complex fill for a couple of beats, what I might do is just slice it. Let's say I'm going to make a little cut there. Let's pretend that's a part I want omitted from flex editing. I can turn on flex editing for those. And then what I can do is selectively turn it off for the areas that I want left alone. So it's very useful. So when it's in on mode, 
It's going to follow any manual flex edits, which we want. And it also follows changes to the project tempo, which is what we want. But we have some additional modes. Watch what happens when I go to on plus align bars. We see, actually, I had only that one selected. Let me select all of these. When I go to on plus align bars, you'll see these additional smart tempo beat markers enabled. So in this mode, it's going to follow the project tempo and flex markers. But additionally, smart tempo beat markers are used to conform the region to the project tempo. So it's another kind of guideline that flex can use in making sure that it's going to conform to tempo when your original audio file isn't recorded at the tempo of your project and you're using smart tempo to conform it. And we can further get more nuance with that with on align bars and beats we get these beat markers now for smart tempo that are again used to help the flex edits conform to the project tempo but for most regular flex editing just on is going to be fine now let's say you're editing with flex markers and you've kind of gone down a rabbit hole and you want to undo what you've done quickly we can easily in the project browser over here under audio files we can go analyze audio for flex editing, and it'll reanalyze the audio file. Now there, I just had a couple of regions selected, so we didn't see the reanalysis. If I selected the file, it would do it. But we can also do it, I'm just gonna hide that, in the audio editor, in the track editor, under edit, you can go analyze audio for flex editing, and it'll reanalyze the files. And there's three audio files, guitar audio files on this track, so it's analyzing each one independently, reanalyzing all the transients. So it's easy to just sort of get back to a base starting point. Now, one other setting I want to draw your attention to when we're in the project settings on the Smart Tempo tab over here, whenever we have new recordings, we can have them default to flex and follow mode being on or on and align bars or on and align bars and beats or off. The default is off, but you can set it where you want. And same thing for imported audio files. When you import them, you can set them to default to any of these modes. We'll continue with more in the next video.